Disc brakes are great, but they aren't perfect, and rim brakes offer several key advantages over them. So before you go out and spend all your hard-earned cash on a fancy schmancy new disc brake bike, watch this video because we're going to give you some top tips to make sure that you can maximize the performance of your rim brakes. Over time, your brake cables will stretch, they will corrode, just generally get gunged up with dirt, and they can even develop a fray inside the housing like this one has here. These can reduce the braking power when you pull the lever, but also just make them feel not as good. You sort of have a sort of spongy feeling. But changing your cables is a very quick, easy job. You just get a nice new shiny cable like this, they're relatively inexpensive, and you might not always have to change your outers, in which case it's a very quick job to do. That said, if your outers are like a couple of years old, your bike's probably gonna benefit from having fresh new outers on there as they do wear out over time. And if you've pulled a frayed cable through there that's not been cut properly or it's just frayed over time, that can damage the internal coating of the outer uh, as well, in which case it's worth replacing it. But replacing outers still isn't a super hard job and it's one that we've done videos on so you can check those out and in our GCN Essential Maintenance Guidebook we've got step-by-step -step guide so you can check that out. It's available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork. If you are going to cut your own cables and perform your own home maintenance, which I highly recommend you do, make sure you invest or use a correct cable cutting tools, dedicated tools. It's really important. If you bodge it by using big scissors or garden shears, you'll likely cut the cable badly and cause it to fray. Or if you're cutting your outer, you'll either crush it or again, not cut it in a nice straight flat line. And this can cause problems with braking performance further down the line. Also, when you're fitting your braking outers, make sure you cut them to the correct length and make sure that when you fit ferrules onto them, they are flush right up against the end of the cable and there's not a gap, they're not loose. If they're loose and they can move like that, then when you pull the brake lever, what will happen is first, you will close that gap and pull the ferrule onto the end of the cable. And then, well, that's reducing the amount of braking performance that you have. Next, check the setup and alignment of the brake pads over the wheel. It sounds obvious, but I see so many people that don't have their brake calipers set up optimally, and it really does you know, reduce the performance. So check that the caliper is properly centered over the wheel, and also that the wheel is fully in the dropouts, as again, that can cause the wheel to actually sit off center, even when the caliper is centered. Check that the distance between the brake pads and the wheel rim is the same on both sides, so that both brake pads, when you pull the lever, connect with the rim at the same time. Another thing to check is the distance of the brake pads to the wheel rim. Having them closer in will mean that when you pull the lever, your brakes come on sooner. Now, I personally like to have them really close so that you only have to pull the brakes a bit and they start to come on, but it's personal preference. Some people like to have it so that they're quite slackened off and you can pull the lever all the way in before they start to come on. So you can decide what works better for you. But bear in mind that if your wheels are rubbing, it might mean that you've got quite a flexible wheel and it being very close to the pads is causing it to flex and then rub on the brake pad, particularly when you're out of the saddle or sprinting. So if you're experiencing that, it might be worth running your brakes a little bit wider. And make sure that when the brakes do make contact with the braking surface, they are contacting exactly that, the braking surface, and they're not too low and say touching the wheel rim and not the braking part or too high and rubbing against your tire as that can cause a blowout. An advantage of disc brakes is that when they wear down, the pads actually self-center and keep moving inwards. That's thanks to the reservoir of hydraulic fluid that's housed within the hood. Rim brakes don't do that, which means that as they wear down, they naturally get further away from the braking surface. And so to adjust this, you can simply use the barrel adjuster on the caliper to just nip them in. Now, when your brake pads eventually fully wear down, 
you'll want to sort your pads out. And pads can also, by upgrading them, improve the performance of your brakes. So to remove the pads, it's usually just an Allen bolt like this, and then this will remove the pad and the shoe. When you remove the shoes, it allows you to inspect the pads more easily. And the first thing you're looking at is the amount of wear on them. So they actually have usually a wear line, which it says when it gets to this point, they need replacing. Manon has managed to wear them all the way past the wear line. You can't even see it anymore. So these pads are well overdue being replaced. To replace them is that easy. You simply undo this little grub screw here, and then that releases the pad, allows you to slide them out, and then slide in a fresh set. But when you're using this little grub, grub screw, make sure that you use the correct end of an Allen key. So this end, and not this end. Now I've seen many people round out these little grub screws. It's very easy to do, so you have to use the correct end of the Allen key, and they don't need much force applying on them. They only need to be sort of nipped up as far as they'll go. You don't need to sort of add any extra torque on there to tighten them. They just go in as far as they'll go. So many people round out these little grub screws and then can't get their brake blocks out. Now, if Manon continues to use these brake pads, what will eventually happen as they get past their wear limit is you will wear all the way down until you get to the other side of this bolt here, at which point metal will start to protrude through where the brake pad was, and then this will gouge your wheel rims and just trash them very quickly. It also makes a horrific sound, so make sure you don't get to that point. With your pads out, it's also a good opportunity to inspect them. Sometimes you get little bits of debris or little bits of metal stuck in the braking surface, which can then cause damage to your wheels. So you can always take a pick and pick out those bits. Another thing that can happen is the brake pad gets sort of glassed over, um, which is a product of the heat generated from braking, and then it becomes really smooth and glassy. This reduces braking performance. So something you can do as a quick hack to fix that is get a file or some sandpaper and just rough up the surface a little bit. This will increase friction and your braking performance. Now, if your pads do need changing, why not consider upgrading them to improve the performance as well? The most alloy rims will be absolutely fine running just the standard pads that come with Campagnolo, Shimano, or SRAM, but Carbon rims can benefit from higher end pads. That said, some manufacturers do recommend you use a very specific pad type with their wheels. Not all do. And this is all generally about heat dissipation. Different pad compounds will dissipate and deal with heat better than others. And this can improve your braking performance on carbon rims. When you do replace your brake pads though and put the shoes back into place, a good thing that you should always do is toe in your pads. We've mentioned this in plenty of videos before and there's plenty of videos that will show you in depth how to do it. But what you simply do is take a business card, this is a classic hack, here's a GCN business card, um, and you slot that in the rear sort of third in between the brake pad and the, the wheel rim. And then when you pull on the brake, what this will do is just cause the front of the pad to make contact with the braking surface momentarily before the rear of the pad. You then simply take your Allen key and tighten up your brake shoe in place. Now this can often reduce the noise as well that your brakes make, something which can afflict certain rim brakes and wheel rim combinations. Sometimes they can be very noisy. Another thing that you might want to consider doing is reconditioning your brake calipers. Over time, they do get gunged up and they take quite a bit of abuse. The rear one especially gets a lot more dirt caked on it, and as a result, it often wears out first before your front one. And you know when they're sort of a bit worn out or in need of reconditioning, because when you pull on your brake lever, it closes, but then when you release it, it doesn't spring back open as easily. It's slow to spring open or it just stays stuck on altogether and sort of rubs against your wheel. Now, good quality calipers from the main brands can be completely 
removed and taken apart and put into bits, whereupon you can totally sort of strip them down, clean them, give them a good dose of, uh, well, MO94, is, uh, well, some kind of like PT, PTFE spray. Uh, one thing you might need to replace on them though, uh, little sort of nylon bushings on some caliper designs, but these are very cheap to pick up and much cheaper and much more inexpensive than the cost of a brand new caliper. If you're cleaning your calipers, it's worth cleaning your rims as well. And to be honest, you should clean your rims as often as you clean your bike. The more you clean your rims and keep them free from dirt and the inside of your, your brake pads, the longer your brakes are gonna last. Now, if you're gonna do this, soapy water is your friend and the best thing to use. I'd avoid using sort of PTFE sprays like MO94 because they reduce friction and it will, well, compromise your braking. Sometimes people have sprayed, you know, MO94 or something, other PTFE sprays on their wheel rims, it's not advised, and then they come to put on their brakes and it just, the wheels keep spinning. So, don't do that. If you are going to go down the route of reconditioning your calipers, we do have a specific video that goes into more detail than I've just explained there. So make sure you check that out. But sometimes, you know, no reconditioning is going to save a caliper. Sometimes it's too far gone, in which case it's time to replace them. So while you're replacing your caliper, why not consider an upgrade? It's not just a way in which you can improve your braking performance with a higher spec caliper, but also shed some weight off your bike as well. This caliper is a direct mount design, meaning it has two mounting points on the frame. They're really good, but bear in mind you can't upgrade to a direct mount caliper unless you have direct mount fixings on your bike, in which case you'll have to use a single, single mount caliper. But do bear in mind that there is a big difference in braking performance from older calipers and budget spec calipers compared to the latest single mount dual pivot designs from say Shimano is a good example. So just even like 105 spec and above calipers of today are so, so much more powerful than calipers of say 10 years ago. Now, if you're wanting to save weight when you upgrade your calipers, and it is a great thing to do because one of the big advantages over the rim brakes are that they are significantly lighter setups than disc brakes, is that if you go full weight weenie and go for some of these very exotic, specialist, uh, very lightweight brake calipers, in our experience, the braking performance of those often isn't anywhere near as good in terms of stopping power compared to the slightly heavier, but still very lightweight top spec calipers such as you know, uh, Shimano Jura Ace or Campagnolo Super Record. So that is just something to bear in mind. So there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. Let us know your tips in the comments for maximizing the performance of your rim brakes, um, as it would be great to read them. And if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you know what to do, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.